So I thought I'd um, talk to the YouTubes today about a topic that a lot of um, people have questions about and that I sometimes hear about, which is uh, having an emergency food supply. And so um, here before me is an emergency food supply that cost me nothing. And that's not because I got a grocery store sponsorship. Uh, it's not because I stole it. It's not because I found it. Um, I just followed a food storage prepping method that allows you to accumulate food for free. I'm not talking about a points reward card either. Uh, I'm not talking about um, the copy canning method that you might be familiar with. Uh, this is different and I simply bought food uh, in bulk when it was on sale. So I'm going to run you through how to do that so that you always have food on hand. Okay, so the copy canning method basically uh, is a method of food storage where you would figure out how much food you wanted to have on hand. Uh, so let's say you've got 10 jars of pasta sauce. As you use a can of pasta sauce, you would write down, and then when you go grocery sh shopping, you would replace it, moving your oldest can uh, forward and your newest can to the back so that you always have those 10 cans of pasta sauce. Um, and you just uh, keep rotating them through. At least that's my understanding of the copy canning method. In this method here, what you're doing is you are looking for um, items on sale, checking the expiry date, and then you're buying as many of them as you would regularly use within the expiry date period, and you're uh, getting the maximum savings from purchasing a bulk amount, and then you're also creating a food storage. Um, so there's a couple of rules to this system. Rule number one, only buy what you are going to eat. Okay, so I've definitely been burned, uh, especially in the early days of the pandemic. I did a little bit of panic shopping and I have uh, a shelf of shame that's got uh, a few kilograms of dried beans. I've never cooked with them before, but I thought, oh, these will never go bad. And you know, maybe I won't regret that purchase, but um, so far they've been sitting there for a pretty long time not being used and I'm going to have to teach myself how to cook with all these dried beans that I have. So just buy things that you would normally eat within um, your regular diet. Rule number two is to check the expiry on the product. So for example, um, uh, peanut butter, right? Usually good for more than a year. So if you go through one kilogram of peanut butter in a month, and it goes on sale, right? And most of these products will regularly go on sale for 30%, 50% off, a pretty big savings, significant. If you go through one a month and it lasts for a year, then you would buy 12 of them and set them all up. Now you don't have to worry about peanut butter for a year. If partway through the year, you've eaten six of them and peanut butter goes on an irresistible sale again, then you could buy another six so that you still have a one-year supply on hand uh, or you might purchase a different amount. Uh, things like evaporated milk, um, I have maybe 10 of them here. I don't use them that often but the kids use them in cooking and uh, I take them camping sometimes. So 10 is about as many as I would use in a 12-month period and that's probably the maximum that I would want to keep. Uh, if they go on some kind of a ridiculous sale and I'm running low, then I would maybe stock up another case of 12. So I've talked about um, my kids baking. It's pretty important that you figure out what kind of foods also your kids would eat. So you could ask them, hey, what are five meals? If you had to stay at home for a month, what are five meals that you could eat, you know, day in, day out, every day of the week? Um, you know, I'm sure you can think of lots of scenarios where you might be stuck at home, especially now during a pandemic and the age of lockdowns and quarantines. Uh, so this gives you a huge peace of mind about being stuck at home. No, maybe you won't be able to go out and get your regular fresh uh, veggies, but you have everything on hand to keep yourself fed. Uh, my kids love pasta, so I've got 15... Um, 15, maybe 15 bags of pasta here. So let's look at pasta for a minute. Pasta, a bag of pasta contains about 3000 calories. Uh, I probably cook one or two pasta-based meals in a week. 
So if pasta goes on a ridiculous sale, as it did um, a few months ago, it was 50 cents a bag, which is a very low price in Canada. Uh, at two a week, I should buy 100 because they're not gonna go off in a one year period. I normally would eat two in a week. Um, so I would buy my whole year's supply of pasta all at once. Now, maybe I'm stuck at home under quarantine, some kind of a lockdown, I'm sick, uh, whatever. I'm sure your imagination comes up with all kinds of scenarios. Um, maybe now I'm eating pasta four times a week, but because I bought a one year supply, I still have six months of pasta on hand. Okay, so, and I want to make sure that I have all the things that go with that meal. So I've got, you know, Alfredo sauce, I've got uh, tomatoes, I've got pasta sauces over here. Um, all stuff that I bought on sale and saved a ton of money. Mm, tip number one, you want to try and balance your macros. So while it's really easy to go out and buy a pile of pasta and pasta sauce, and uh, I'm sure during the first wave of the pandemic, you saw those two items in particular uh, disappear from grocery store shelves. That is not a balanced meal. So you wanna make sure that um, when you're planning out your meals that you have some kind of balance in your system. So that could be, you know, between your fats and your carbs and some fruits and vegetables. Um, so here, for example, I've got uh, some applesauce. I've got hidden out of sight here tins of pineapples these were these were ridiculously low price I bought two flats of them that's 24 cans um, they won't expire for a year between my kids and I, I can easily uh, eat 24 cans um, fruits and vegetables also hidden back here I've got nuts um, and so on uh, one one tip again um, you want to uh, round out your food supply so once you've got your bases covered with your uh, your fats your carbs your fruits and veggies your proteins um, make sure that you throw in a few extra things that make life easier so for me that would be uh, nuts and little chocolate bars and things for snacking uh, I have bulk um, granola bars so my kids you know, if I left them out, they would just eat these all day. But we have a rule that they only eat them for school snacks or when we're doing hiking trips and things. But again, they go on sale. Uh, they don't really expire quickly. So why wouldn't you just buy five of these and keep a few of them on hand? Uh, rounding it out again, you might want to keep some things like hot sauce, right? Um, I really like these dehydrated uh, or pre-fried onions. Uh, these are great to cook with. This is a really fast way to add some onions. And especially if you're not able to keep fresh onions around for an extended period of time. Um, these are super uh, off the top of my head. I don't see an expiry date on them, but um, actually I just, uh, awesome. I've had these for probably a year. I just found them when I was digging out my food supply to make a pile here and it doesn't expire until August the 21st so it's still got another six months um, before the expiry date which is a very uh, subjective number anyway round it out with some dried fruits things you're going to use anyway so that could be raisins could be dates could be apricots could be dried apples those kinds of things um, I also like to pick up uh, dehydrated veggies okay so if you're not able to get out for fresh veggies um, having these on hand really is great for adding to pasta sauces soups etc um, also this doubles as a really great dehydrated food to take camping um, I recently dehydrated two kilograms of corn frozen corn I did it on my wood stove uh, now my two kilograms of frozen corn is one pound of dehydrated corn Okay, so another storage option. And make sure that you've got, this is sea salt. So you want your sea salt and spices. Most people have about a 15 year supply of spices in their cupboard anyway, as far as I'm concerned. Um, so make sure you cover off all your bases and cover off all your meals. So my kids, um, you know, they'll, they'll whine and complain sometimes, but I happen to know that they will eat um, 
granola, sorry, uh, oatmeal for breakfast every day of the week if they need to. So I have uh, a supply of these on hand. You can buy bulk quick oats. That's another really good one because you can use it just for breakfast, but also my kids will bake cookies and things with it. Okay. So here I have roughly um, a pretty big pile of uh, non-perishable food items. They're all things that I regularly eat. I saved money by buying them uh, in bulk. I have peace of mind knowing that I can easily do an extended period of time at home uh, without having to resupply food. Um, and if you look it over, think about how many calories of food you think there are sitting on the table right now while I just go over one one more tip. So for some of you, this it might be intuitive to know how many uh, peanut butters you go through, how many condensed milks, how much uh, coconut milk or etc. you would go through within a year, within a month, within a six month period. Um, but for others, you might have to do a little bit of investigative work. So you might want to keep track on a piece of paper somewhere with a pen. Um, so for example, uh, recently, one of my favorite um, brands and sizes of coffee went on sale for, I'm gonna say like 40% off, like a really, really good deal. I actually didn't know how much coffee I go through uh, within a given period. Um, these these uh, coffee cans, their expiry is about eight months. Uh, so I started keeping track. So when I opened a fresh one, I wrote the date on it. I will check when I use it up. Based on when I started and the amount that's gone, it looks like I drink uh, one of these of coffee about every three weeks to a month. So because they don't expire for eight months, uh, instead of buying one and then not being sure, I should have I should have just bought eight, right? I would have saved uh, $32 maybe um, on that purchase, which is not uh, an insignificant amount of money. Um, that would be enough to go out and buy another box of 308 shells for hunting or a few boxes of 12 gauge. Ooh, but there's an ammunition shortage. There's another topic for another video. Is there an ammunition shortage in Canada? Okay, back to the food supply. Uh, on the table right here, right now, based on my best uh, tally, there are 132,000 calories of food. That's enough for me to do 66 days watching Netflix, uh, sitting around my house, kind of doing nothing. Um, if I chop some firewood, run a trap line, do some hunting, do some exercise, do some push-ups in the house, etc., bump my calorie expenditure up, keep myself fit and active, uh, then we're looking at about 40 days of food supply. Uh, if I am stuck at home with my children, right uh, then there are four of us so we divide that amount by four so we'd be looking at about a two week supply for four of us uh, watching Netflix and if we all got active uh, then it's about a 10 day supply now there clearly are some some staples missing um, from this collection I just wanted to show you some easy to procure uh, non-perishable food items uh, some notable things that are missing I have rice uh, I have several bags of this oatmeal um, and I have uh, flour, I have um, some sugar, oh, oh, we're in Canada, eh? so maple syrup, I added three jars of maple syrup into my tally, um, but in reality <clears throat> I probably have at least 20 of these um, from maple sugar season last year in storage, okay, so this is a portion of my food but just to give you an idea this is not a huge amount um, this is not that hard to store I could fit most of this just in my kitchen cupboards without even going to uh, like a storage container or shelving now I did want to talk about uh, shelving briefly so you might have recently seen on my channel I did a video about storing uh, food in galvanized trash cans super handy um, but in the video, I give you a couple of tricks to make sure that your um, trash can storage is safe and effective. Um, I also uh, looked at Princess Auto 
uh, which is kind of like the Canadian um, version of Harbourfront, Harbour City, Harbour something in the States. I forget what your American version of our Princess Auto is. Uh, but Princess Auto is a Canadian store. And um, that's uh, they had trash cans, but they also had like half height trash cans, which looked really good for sliding under um, tables and workbenches and things. But they also have um, a couple of other storage solutions that were really tempting to me because I'm using an old pantry system right now. Um, but, but two that caught my eye are um, a four shelf uh, locker which was really handy so it was it looked very rodent proof it was rated for outdoors use um, it also if you have trouble with your kids uh, getting in and sneaking into your um, your goodies that are in storage it would be a way to maybe lock that up and keep them out uh, I know <laughs> have less of a problem with them sneaking uh, granola bars and more of a problem of them looking in the fridge and saying oh there's no ketchup and then they go to the pantry because there's always extra ketchup they go and open a brand new bottle there's half a bottle in the fridge right uh, it is pretty normal for us to have two or three partially open partially full bottles of ketchup in the fridge it's one of my pet peeves um, another good storage option uh, from the locker which is mouse proof rodent proof uh, but the disadvantage is that it is um, a contained box so you can't see into the back or know what's behind stuff is to buy industrial shelving and situate it in such a way that you can use your oldest items from the front and then when you when you um, stock up on new items you can move them to the back so that you're always eating your oldest uh, non-perishable foods first so that advantage of a shelving unit is that you can access both sides of it and it makes it a lot easier than trying to reach around to push stuff into the back. So uh, obviously if you have um, any eating restrictions uh, in your family you might want to adjust the kinds of things that you buy. So for example um, you can buy rice pasta instead of wheat pasta if you're gluten free uh, or if you've got allergies to work around in your family maybe you don't stock up on peanut butter but you have other condiments. Um, other uh, butters or other options so there you have it uh, giant pile of food saved me money to buy it gives me peace of mind uh, it's all stuff that I would normally eat um, I mean there are lots of great long-term storage options uh, personally I've eaten some MREs and I find that they're uh, kind of like Christmas like when you open them up and you don't know what kind of little candy bars in there or something that's a great little surprise but i don't think that i would want to be sitting on um, 500 mre meals and have to eat them day in day out uh over an extended period of time i don't even think that in the military that they eat mres constantly for long periods of time but that'd be a great comment for you to drop below what is the longest period that you've gone eating nothing but mres i'm curious to know okay so uh, I wish you um, luck in putting together your own emergency food supply, uh, whether that's for a week or two weeks or longer. Um, I think that you will be happy with the peace of mind that comes with having a little bit of extra food on hand. And I think you'll be very happy uh, with the extra padding in your pocket from the money that you save when you follow this method. Cool. Okay. Catch you on the next one, YouTube.